everyone. My name is Brian Parman. I'm the North Dakota State University Agricultural Finance Specialist and today I'm going to do a video on uh, North Dakota cattle production costs and budgeting and talk a little bit about um, the advantages to backgrounding heifers at the end. I've looked through a lot. I'm going to use the farm business managers data uh, for some of this and what I'm showing here is average net return per beef cow in the state of North Dakota since 2005. You can see in 2019, uh, that was around $60 per head. It's down off of 18 and down off of 17, kind of approaching the, the lower period of 2016. But on average as a state, still positive, uh, well off the high of 2014. But again, still positive uh, per, per cow. This is the net return per cow across North Dakota. Now the difference between high net income and low net income Without going through all the data and showing just reams of tables, I can tell you it's costs. Uh, year over year, what you wind up seeing is that average market price for the that received for calves for the top producers versus the bottom producers in terms of net income uh, is very similar, um, within a few bucks per hundredweight. And actually weaning weights, <clears throat> for the most part, are very similar for the top end and the bottom end in terms of net income. So in other words, most producers are receiving similar market prices year over year. They're weaning similar weight calves on average and weaning percentages as well. In other words, the low, low net income 20% are not just poor at keeping their calves alive. No, their weaning percent is, is about the same as the, as the top end producers. So these factors right here, while very important, it doesn't appear as though there's a huge discrepancy between the bottom and the top end in the state. The largest difference between the higher net revenue beef cow producers and the lower net revenue is in costs, especially feed costs. When you go comb through the data, you can see that feed costs are one of the biggest reason, often maybe $100, $150 more per head than the higher end producers uh, in terms of net revenue. And so that's really making all the difference in the world right there. So let's look at uh, efficiency for beef cattle production, just one statistic uh, one metric going forward and that is this operating expense ratio okay the top the top 20 percent in terms of uh, operating expense ratio about 68.8 percent of their revenues are going to pay operating expenses on average since 2010 never really going above in in 2016 was a little little tighter at 78 percent but for the most part hanging around that 70 high 60s to 70 percent mark now, if we look at the low 20%, it's closer to 79 to 80%, and in the leaner years, even 90% going to operating costs, like in 2018. So that's a lot of money not left over to pay overhead and depreciation and these other, uh, other fees that have to be paid for any beef cattle operation with that much money paid toward operating expenses. And if you look at the middle 40 to 80%, well, that's about, that's closer to what the top 20% are paying. That's that 70, 69 to 70% in operating expense ratio. So it just shows, and, and by the way, the middle 40 to 80% have a positive net return as well. So it just shows that there's this, this group of producers down near in the low 20 that, that are having a hard time uh, being able to account for and in uh, source and and generate feed, especially in these cold winter months, at an a, at a financially sustainable rate. It's a uh, it gets expensive, and and I understand that. I think we all do, but that's the area where it tends to be the difference between the higher net revenue and the lower net revenue individuals is right there in the costs. Now, the biggest and best thing that you can do is budgeting, capital bu uh, capital budgeting, partial enterprise budgeting. That's it, it's it's hard to identify where a lot of this money is going if, if it's not detailed out like it is here. And this is North Dakota State University's cow-calf enterprise budget. Uh, we just use averages across the state with total cost per cow at $659. Your costs may differ. That's why when you go to this link here, you can download this budget. You put in your numbers. Be as detailed as you can. Here's where you put in your revenue type figures and then it comes out with your total returns, okay? 
So the first thing to identifying some cost saving measures is knowing where all your costs are going and indeed finding out, are we spending too much on silage hay? Are we spending too much on pasture, other protein feed minerals, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one thing to really keep in mind is that detailed enterprise budgets are the first step towards finding out where all the money's going and trying to evaluate are there some cost saving measures that can be taken or when you're comparing yourself maybe to some of the state averages, why are my feed costs so much higher? Is it because I'm paying too much pasture rent? Is it because I'm paying too much for hay and silage? Those kind of things. That's what this helps identify the most. And without it, it's really nearly impossible to determine where a lot of the money is going. And then the final thing I wanted to say that Tim Petrie has mentioned several times, and as have I, and that is uh, backgrounding heifers. Um, we talk about ways that we can, at, at a relatively low cost, increase revenue for our beef producers. And backgrounding heifers is one of those ways. Um, when you look at the difference between heifers that say, 500 weight versus uh, 800 weight. The price slide changes from $28 difference per hundred weight to $14 per difference per hundred weight. So in other words, you can make money simply closing the gap between steers and heifers by holding on to them to 800 pounds. Even if you break even on the feed, okay, and break even on the overhead and feed, just closing that price gap, you can make, you know, upwards of $50 a head per more, then if prices swing your way, it can, it can be much, much better. But the point of this is, if, if, and then if you can put on some weight even cheaper, if you have the access to some cheaper feed or something, then, then, then the possibilities grow. It's a little more tricky with steers uh, because of the fact, simply because of the fact that, you know, they're worth a lot more. So this closing the price gap there with heifers um, is, uh, is, is, is another way. So with that, I'd like to thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions about cow-calf enterprise budgets or um, some more inf uh, information requested about the data showing the difference in, in production costs for our lower, higher cost producers, feel free to email or call me. And uh, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.